Is the AI bubble about to burst? Are we in an AI bubble? Of course. There are just these breathless storytelling narratives around how all the AI trees are growing to the sky. And I think when the dust settles, uh, whenever this bubble pops, uh, there's going to be tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars that will literally be incinerated. So are we in a bubble or not? It's a question everyone's asking. And the answer, well, it's a little bit more complicated than you think because something really strange is happening. On the one hand, tech CEOs are promising AGI within two to three years. They are committing $600 billion. Oh wait, no, actually, they're literally just making up numbers on the spot at the White House. Mm, yeah, Tim Cook said $600 billion. Yeah, I'll go with that as well. Meta are investing $600 billion, Mr. President. Insane. And if you thought that was where it all ends, well, you are mistaken because OpenAI was just valued at $500 billion, the most valuable private company in history. And on the other hand, MIT just dropped a study showing that 95% of companies using AI are getting zero returns. Klarna laid off 700 customer service workers to replace them with AI, only to quietly rehire humans months later when a customer satisfaction tanked. Deloitte just had to issue a refund to an Australian government after admitting that they use AI to write a $440,000 report because it was littered with errors and made up references. And we call that hallucinating. Research shows that this AI bubble is now 17 times larger than the dot-com crash and four times bigger than 2008. And while all of this is happening, the stock market continues to hit new all-time highs and Wall Street is promising everybody that with AI, this time is really different. Something doesn't add up here. And the more I continue digging, the more concerned I became. Hi, I'm Suleiman. I've been in tech for over a decade. I've seen a few bubbles pop in my time and took part in them to my detriment thanks to crypto in 2021. Today, I run my own companies in consulting, software, and education. And yes, we are slapping AI powered in front of everything to increase our valuation. Now, don't hate me for it. It's just part of the game. In this video, I'm going to show you what's really happening behind the scenes why this AI bubble is different and bigger than we have ever seen before. And what happens to all of us regular Joes when the AI bubble finally pops? Let's get into it. So 95%, that's the percentage of companies using generative AI that are getting zero return on investment. According to MIT, companies are spending billions on AI projects. Just look at big tech alone spending $320 billion in 2025. They are hiring AI engineers, paying them $500,000 a year, or if you're Zuck, $100 million per year. They are restructuring entire departments around AI transformation and efficiency. And 95% of them have nothing to show for it. Imagine that you are running a company. Let's say that you spend $50 million on an AI initiative. Your board approved it because, well, everyone else in the industry industry is doing it, your competitors are doing it. The stock market rewards companies that talk about AI. But after a year, you realize it's not actually making you any money. That's what's happening right now at massive scale across pretty much every major company. And here is what nobody's saying out loud. The only companies actually making money from AI are the ones selling the shovels, the NVIDIAs, the cloud providers like AWS, GPU manufacturers, even Oracle has been getting a piece of the pie recently. They are printing money while everyone else is burning it. It's like the California gold rush in 1848 all over again, except this time Levi Strauss isn't making jeans for the miners. He's actually building the data centers for people to vibe code a new useless app that doesn't solve a single problem. Great, but wait. If we've established that AI doesn't really work, then why is everyone so optimistic? Surely the stock market isn't rewarding companies that aren't making any real profit. Oh yeah, that's exactly what they are doing. This is partly because of the fear of missing out, just like me in 2021 with crypto and partly because, hey, everyone else is doing it, so my company can't be seen as the big dinosaur that's just too stubborn to adapt. It's a risky endeavor and the cracks are servicing. OpenAI is expected to burn through $44 billion, meaning that they are losing money on every single user. 
Every time that you use ChatGPT, OpenAI is paying more to serve you that response than you are paying them. There are over 800 million active ChatGPT users per week, but only around 10 million are paying users. Considering it's $20 a month for the most revolutionary technology that we've ever had, and we've only got 10 million paying users. It makes you think, doesn't it? I guess someone has to sell the dream to investors to pump their stock. And who better? that are most trustworthy and integrity first CEO than we have ever seen, Sam Altman. OpenAI went from essentially zero to $500 billion in valuation, and it's not based on profits. It's based on the promise of AGI. And this is where the hype reaches absolutely ridiculous levels. AGI, artificial general intelligence, is supposed to be AI that can match or exceed human intelligence across basically every task. And according to tech CEOs, it's right around the corner. Sal Maltman says maybe two to three years. Elon Musk says possibly 2026. Then again, he has been promising self-driving cars are very close for like a decade. Now, regardless, everyone's seemingly very confident, but nobody can actually define what AGI even is. Sam Altman defines it as AI that's generally smarter than humans. Is that so hard with the AI slot nowadays and the brain rot? Steve Wozniak says that is when AI can walk into any kitchen and make coffee. Others say it's when AI can do any job a human can do. Now, this isn't an accident. The vague definition is a feature and not a bug. Because if you can't pin down what you are building, you can always claim that you're close to achieving it. And the irony is, the promise of AGI changing the future of work has actually just become AI slot videos of Sam Altman stealing GPUs. But oh, make sure you don't opt out of Sora 2 because we will permanently ban your email and your phone number if you do. That realization when this fantasy of AGI changing the world and it's literally just ChatGPT running ads and then charging everyone a fee to avoid us seeing them. It's the classic tech playbook and we've seen it in virtually every single big tech product ever. Now, let me explain. Right now, AI is incredibly useful when it's free or when it's cheap. But the second that you try and make it profitable, you need to actually cover your costs. The product becomes worse. They hook you with a great free product, then slowly make it worse as they chase profitability. It's the same pattern. Spotify, YouTube, Twitter, all of them. And you would think that people would learn from the past. You would think investors would pump the brakes and say, wait, maybe we are getting ahead of ourselves. But no, because once enough money flows into something, it creates its own momentum. VCs don't want to be the ones who missed out. Companies don't want to look like they are falling behind. Everyone is just terrified of being the next Nokia or Blockbuster. So the money keeps flowing in and the bubble, it just keeps inflating. And here is just how big this thing has gotten. The AI bubble now is 17 times larger than a dot-com bubble and four times bigger than a 2008 real estate crash. We're not talking about a market correction. We are talking about something that could break the entire global economy. And here is the thing with AI. Most people don't actually understand what they are investing in. Because when you look under the hood at how AI actually works, the gap between the hype and the reality becomes crystal clear. Current AI is what we call large language models or LLMs. They are basically very sophisticated pattern matching machines. Think of it like this. If you give me the sentence, the capital of France is. Your brain immediately knows Paris because you've learned that association. LLMs do the same thing, but at massive scale. They've been fed billions of text examples from the internet. Every book, every article, every Wikipedia entry, and they've learned to predict what words should statistically come next in any given sentence. And that's the magic trick. It's prediction based on patterns. Now, this is genuinely useful. I use AI every day, and I'm sure most of you watching do as well. But here is the limitation. An LLM needs thousands of labeled images and data to be trained on. This is why 76% of AI researchers say that simply scaling up current approaches is unlikely to achieve AGI. In other words, we can't do more of what we are currently doing in order to truly achieve AGI, if we can ever actually do it. And this is becoming even more apparent recently. ChatGPT 5 was supposed to be the next big leap, but when it launched, it was underwhelming. It's a little better for sure, but it wasn't revolutionary. It wasn't a, oh my God, everything just changed moment. And it actually costs 10 times more to train GPT-5 than GPT-4. This is what we call diminishing returns. 
The reason that this is happening is because we've started to hit a wall. In other words, we are running out of data to feed AI and also simply scaling up the amount of compute isn't going to move the needle like it used to. You see, the internet is massive, but most of it is garbage spam. Duplicate content, low quality forum posts, misinformation. We've already fed AI all of the good stuff. So now what? Some companies are actually trying synthetic data, having AI create data to train other AI. But each time that you do this, the quality degrades. And early research is already showing that models trained on synthetic data perform worse than models trained on real human data. And here is the truth that nobody in Silicon Valley wants to admit. The architecture that we are using is not capable of artificial general intelligence. It's really good at what it is doing right now, but we've been promised AGI, human level thinking, you know, curing cancer for good. And we might have already extracted most of the value that we are going to get from this current approach with LLMs. But none of this stops the hype train because right now the story matters way more than the reality. Which brings me to the boomerang workforce. Over 166,000 tech workers have been laid off in 2025 so far. And companies are saying it's because of AI. We are becoming more efficient. AI can do the work of free people. We are leaner, we are faster, we are better. Investors have been cheering on AI layoffs as company stock prices have been rising off the back of these announcements. Like Bumble, whose stock price rocketed 25% on the same day that they announced layoffs. But here's what's actually happening behind those headlines. Companies fire workers to replace them with AI. Then they realize that AI doesn't work. Then they quietly rehire the same people that they just laid off. It's called the boomerang workforce. And it's happening right now. Swedish fintech company Klarna made headlines by laying off 700 customer service representatives and just replacing them with AI. The cost savings looked amazing on paper. Of course, the board left it and so did the investors. Stock price went up, but then something happened. Customer satisfaction started dropping and it started dropping fast. People couldn't get their issues resolved. The AI couldn't handle anything outside of its narrow training. Customers were stuck in endless loops with no way to reach a human. This summer, Klarna quietly started rehiring. They admitted defeat and they brought back the very humans they'd laid off months earlier. And they are not alone. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia laid off 45 customer service roles only to rehire weeks later as core volume surge and customer satisfaction tanked. This is the 1990s offshoring wave all over again. This was when every bank, every telco, and every utility company scrambled to move all call centers overseas to cut costs. Within a few years, most of them reversed course, bringing jobs back and using local customer service as a marketing badge of honor. Now, the same thing is happening today with AI, because I'm sure that you've seen companies say things like human support only, like it's a badge of honor. So companies are reducing headcount that looks great on the balance sheet until customers start leaving and then they rehire the previously laid off workers. But the damage goes deeper than just the hiring costs. Internally, company culture gets destroyed. When you lay off people only to then rehire them months later, you're telling your entire workforce three key things. The first one is management has no idea what they are doing. The second one is that the technology they said would replace you doesn't actually work. And the third one, when the tech does improve, you are definitely out next time. So is AI really good enough to replace workers today? I'll leave you to decide that. Now let's talk about what actually happens when this AI bubble pops, because it's not a question of if anymore, it's a question of when. And as Warren Buffett famously said, you only find out who's swimming naked when a tide goes out. First, you need to understand this. Not everything disappears. When the dot-com bubble burst, we still got Google, Amazon, eBay, and Microsoft. Most companies died, but the good ones, they survived and they built the internet that we use today. The same thing will happen with AI. OpenAI isn't going anywhere. They've just got too many users. AI tools that genuinely work, you know, the boring ones that actually save time on specific tasks, they will stick around. But the 90% of AI startups burning through cash without a real business model, they are done.
we are likely to see a massive wave of acquisitions and something new that's been happening in Silicon Valley. Aqua hires. Big companies buying struggling AI startups for pennies on the dollar, not for their products, but for their actual engineering team. Microsoft bought Inflection AI. But really, they just hired the team and then they shut down the product. Meta did the exact same with Scale AI. Google did it with WindServe after their deal with OpenAI collapsed. And here is the part that should really concern people. When this AI bubble does burst, they are going to blame the technology and not the thousands of other things Wall Street and tech CEOs did to bring it on. They will say AI didn't work, not that we overhyped it, not that we lied to investors, not that we cut jobs for short-term stock gains. They are not going to take any sort of responsibility, obviously. And the real damage won't be to the billionaires. Sam Altman will be completely fine. The VCs and founders who profited billions will be fine. They'll just move their billions to slightly fewer billions. But the people who get hurt are the normal people with the 401ks and the investments. People who lost their jobs and can't find new ones because AI is replacing everyone, even though it isn't. Because when the music stops, the only thing that matters is whether your business is actually profitable. And right now, Almost none of them are, and eventually, the reality catches up. Eventually, investors stop believing the story and start demanding results. Eventually, companies run out of other people's money to burn. And when that day comes, we are going to find out exactly how many of these AI companies were actually building something real versus just riding the hype wave. Now look, we are not in an AI bubble because AI doesn't work. AI works fine for certain things. I use it almost every day and it generally helps me. We are in a bubble because collectively, we've been convinced that AI is going to solve every single problem immediately for everyone all at once. And that's just not how technology works. The internet took 20 years to fully change society. Smartphones took a decade. AI will probably take just as long, maybe a little bit less. But Wall Street doesn't want to hit that this will be transformative in 10 years, they want to hear that this will be transformative next quarter. And that mismatch between the real timeline of AI and the imaginary one that they want you to believe is what creates this bubble. So what should you do? If you are in tech, you have to be smart. Build the skills in areas where AI actually creates the value and not where it creates the hype. For example, you wanna learn cloud infrastructure, AI engineering, machine learning, cloud security, the practical stuff that makes AI work in production, the infrastructure layer. And from there, you have to build your own job security. You can't rely on companies to provide that for you anymore. Those days are long gone. You have to learn how to sell your own services online and work for yourself. Because yes, the AI bubble will burst. And when it does, a lot of people will lose money and lose their jobs. But that's also when the real work begins when people stop chasing valuations and actually start building actually useful technology. And maybe, just maybe, we'll look back in this era and realize that the most valuable thing about AI wasn't AGI or replacing humans or Sora 2. It was that it forced us to finally figure out what problems are actually worth solving.